Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi guys, Sue here at 1A Auto, and today we're going to be installing rear shocks in our 07 Mazda 6 sedan. If you need this part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. 21 millimeter socket, and we're going to loosen up the lug nuts. I like to loosen in a star pattern, the same as installation. I like to loosen the lug nuts up with the weight of the vehicle. That stops the tire from turning. But once they're all loosened up, you can raise your vehicle, support it, and remove the tire. Just give it a wiggle off. Sometimes it will f it's stuck on the hub. I will put a lug nut on finger tight and smack it back and forth. That way the tire doesn't bounce off of me. When doing the rear shocks on this particular model, the manufacturer directions tell you to mark or the degrees angle of the shock. There's a, the bracket, top bracket comes out with the shock at the same time. You'll see as we go along exactly what I, what I'm, why I'm gonna do what I'm about to do. So I'm just gonna mark this bracket and where it mounts up on the top of the shock shroud. Just gonna give myself a general idea, the angle. And then we're gonna go up in there and we're gonna loosen the three bolts that mounted up to the body frame. The socket we're using is a 14 millimeter uh, swivel socket. Um, I like to use swivel sockets because sometimes it just gives that little extra bend to it. You can access this with a wrench and one of them you have to use a wrench on. One down, we're gonna go for the center one. The last one is over on top of the, it's hidden underneath here. I cannot get it with a swivel, I tried. I removed the tire for easy access. You don't have to remove the tire. You can probably sneak your arm up in there, but it's gonna be easy for you to have the visual. Put the tire off and see if I can come in through the side here. And it's all 14 millimeter, so there's a 14 millimeter wrench. You want to undo the top of the shock first, not the bottom main bolt. You'll be tempted because it's right out in the open, but the suspension will drop down. And it's, it's better for you to do the top so that the, the tension off the suspension just kind of goes down slowly instead of the strain on that bolt. And you, you have to do it in reverse. Put the bottom on first, then put the top of the shock mount bracket on for a second. I'm going to see if I can get a ratchet wrench up in there. Let this go a little faster. This one last bolt does take uh, some time due to the fact that you have to use a hand wrench. The ratchet wrench can only be used so much and so for so long because it will bottom out on that upper control on bushing and then you'll have your wrench stuck up in there. <laughs> I was able to get the end of it with my fingers and I pulled it out so now we're ready to undo the lower shock bolt and we're going to manipulate that bracket and shock out together. The head of this mounting bolt is an 18 millimeter socket. I'm using just a half inch socket and breaker bar.
You don't have to use a wrench on the other side because the nut has a welded stopper on it. So it spins around and hits the lower part of the knuckle. Uh, it's kind of nice when the engineers do that for you. What we have had happen here is the, these are factory shocks, it's an 07, and you can see the rust underneath here. New England is uh, not fair to vehicles underneath. So the bolt has actually frozen and rusted to the shock bushing internally. There's all rust build up in there. So I can turn this all day, it just stays in place. So we're gonna start with a brass punch and a hammer. It's a soft metal, so it won't damage my mounting bolt. And I'm gonna see if I can hammer it out. So the brass punch and hammer are loosening up the rust in here, but it's still not coming out as fast as I want it to, so I'm gonna help it along with a little rust penetrant. Hopefully we can uh, break this up, move this along a little faster. I'm gonna let that sit for about five minutes, and then we'll start hammering away. I sprayed it down, I let it soak for a while, and I've been hammering, hammering back and forth to the biggest hammer I have with a brass punch. So now it's time to get the air chisel out with the uh, flat head on it. So that's gonna be a steel chisel, so it's not brass. You have to be careful with the bolt because I need to reuse this bolt. So old trick of the trade, I'm gonna start this nut back on here. I'm gonna put the nut flush with the bolt to see if I can get movement. That way, while I'm hitting on the tip of the bolt, if I slip, I won't ruin the threads. Just rotated it so while the air chisel is hitting it, it doesn't just flatten out one whole side. Now I have the lower bolt dismounted. I am going to try the best I can to weasel this out, which you will find to be a bit challenging. You just can't give up. There's a tab in the front here that goes up into a mounting hole. You're gonna have to pull that tab down right here. So this tab goes up in and stops it from going forward or back. Just a mounting guide, I think. There we go. Now we can access the top mounting bolt. Set it up on a vise so that I can uh, Firmly hold this bracket and I'm going to put a 18 millimeter socket on the nut. See if I can break this free. Good news is it feels like the uh, top bolt is not frozen in the actual shock. I'm going to leave the bracket right in the vise and grab my new shock. place it right in there. Here we have the rear shock to our 07 Mazda 6 sedan from 1AAuto.com and the factory shock. They're in identical length. You can see the bottom and the head of the shock have a wider bushing. 
than the factory, so they improved on that. Give you a smoother and comfortable ride. Before I install this shock, or any other shocks when you are doing shocks, you want to compress the gas up to three times. You'll feel the difference in it, how harder it will get. You have to, it just, something that uh, has been going on for years. Some people don't know this, and they install these and they get a banging sound. I'm gonna do this about three times. I like to bring it all the way down. And it activates the uh, oils and the gases that are inside the chamber here. This is just a dust cover in the piston part of it's coming up here. And you can feel it by the third time. It starts to get a little hotter. And uh, that's what you want. You want this shock ready to go, to be installed. I left my old shock here so I could use that crayon line on the bracket. So I'm going to install the top part of the shock. I'm going to put the bolt through. Start my nut here. And the torque specs to this is 83 foot-pounds. So I have to torque it in the vise because you saw how the bracket gets. You can't get to the head. This sits up inside the car. Unfortunately, there's no access through the trunk or the back seat for this. It's just the way it's designed. So I'm going to just have to eyeball where I feel like the uh, alignment of that, that mark was. I'm going to say that if that was sitting there, it's probably right about here. Give myself a general idea where it's going to be. And then I'm going to have to get a wrench and I can tighten this down. 18 millimeter socket and wrench. Maybe I can snug it, that'd be great. Perfect, now it's not gonna move on me. I'll get my torque wrench, double check my alignment part of it, and we'll torque this down to 83 foot-pounds. While holding my shocks steady, I'm just gonna pull up on this and go to 83 foot-pounds. to go back to the car. We're going to re-tap the lower shock mounting bolt because this was the one that was frozen in the actual bushing and the threads got, they were rusted up good. I cleaned them with a wire wheel and now I'm just going to re-clean them, tap them. It's a 12 by 1.75 thread count. Oh, I, I just put a little penetrating spray on there so that the, uh, it's not cutting the metal dry. It's it's a practice, a good practice to use a lubricant. You, if you've never used a tap and die set before, you want to let the uh, tool do its job and re-slice the threads, but work it back and forth. And it's a good idea to keep spraying. It will take the metal particles out of the thread while it the tools trying to re-thread re the bolt. If you were to catch a burr and you were to keep forcing it, you would actually split the thread open. So that's why I go back and forth. So now I'm gonna clean this bolt with brake clean or part spray, just an aerosol can of clean this up, get that all, make sure there's no metal stuck in the threads. I'm going to manipulate this shock and bracket up inside the body here. It is difficult. It's not uh, something that just falls right in. Okay, so now with that bracket up there, I can uh, put my first mounting bolt in. Just hand tighten it up. That way we can uh, take a breather, not worry about this falling out of the place I just fought for. There's three mounting bolts up there. Putting in the uh, second bolt. I'm 
All right, so I can use a socket now and a ratchet on the other two. 14 millimeter. I'm using a swivel head. There is a torque to this. I can see us torquing two of out of the three. I'll give it an honest effort on that last one. But it's only 38 foot pounds, which is, uh, you know, y you can do that with a good size 3 8 drive ratchet. So now I have my torque wrench, and I'm going to torque it to 38 foot pounds. Now I can use my ratchet wrench and snug this up. Now I'm going to tighten it as much as I can with a regular box end wrench. So I will not get a torque wrench up in there. That is tight. It's not coming down. To line up the lower part of the shock, the suspension has dropped down. And we're going to use a bottle jack. You can use a floor jack at home. And I'm just going to lift the suspension up enough so you'll see that bolt hole will line right up. I can put the bolt through. Give it another half a turn. Okay, went all the way through. Now I'm gonna not I'm not gonna take that jack down until I've tightened this bolt because it'd be a lot of strain on that bolt while it's being tightened. 18 millimeter socket. And the torque on this lower mounting bolt is 93 foot pounds. There we go. We'll let the nut do its job. It's got that stopper on it, that locking clip. I'm sure glad that we got this bolt out and got to save it. I'm going to torque it down to 93 foot pounds. That's a torque wrench. Now we're all set. I'm going to remove the jack and remount my tire. Now I'm going to mount the uh, tire back on. going to hand tighten all the lug nuts until I lower it on the ground and then I'll torque these wheels. Hand tighten my lug nuts, lowered my vehicle just enough to put pressure on the tire. We've got a 21 millimeter socket and the wheel torque on this is 87 foot-pounds. Preset my torque wrench. Now I'm going to tighten them in a star pattern. Then do it. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.